Hey, Dennis here with ATV on tour. Check it out. New side by side and a new trailer. So um, the enclosed trailer was great for two quads, but uh, it did not do the side by side and a quad. I could do one or the other, but not both. So had to uh, change things up and uh, did a lot of shopping, a lot of uh, comparisons. And this is the trailer that I chose. It's made by Low Trail, purchased it in Perth, Ontario. And uh, so it's got the uh, rear gate and it's got the uh, front uh, or side ramps uh, for the uh, quad. So perfect, uh, perfect choice for me. And uh, it is all structural steel, no bent plates here. Uh, the construction is uh, very, very solid. These are uh, structural steel channels, uh, four at four point, uh, four at five point four. For my friends that know a little bit about steel, uh, that is the A-frame, and then everything uh, down below is uh, structural angle, and uh, everything up top here is uh, a square tubing. So uh, lots of places to tie down to. Uh, I installed the E-track, uh, which. Uh, uh, the e-track gives us a whole bunch of different tie points and uh, i did some uh, wood treatment to the deck so i'd like to show you how i did that we'll be doing some uh, videos on the polaris uh, 900s uh, in a very very short time i've uh, figured out uh, the audio system and i have figured out uh, the camera placements uh, for the optimal uh, video and sound quality for you guys so looking forward to showing you some new trails and uh, we'll be doing it uh, both from the uh, quad and from the uh, side by side. So, uh, without any further ado, let's go to uh, treating the deck and installing the e track. So, a couple of features that I really like on this trailer, of course, is uh, the tongue jack. Uh, the tongue jack is uh, easy accessible. There's a pin here, you pull that out uh, once you're hitched up to the truck, and uh, you just have to crank the, the, uh, the jack down just a little bit and then you tilt the jack up and put the pin back in on the right side. So um, you don't have to crank it up and down all the way. Uh, the other nice thing is my tailgate closes or opens and it doesn't hit the jack. So I really do like that. The uh, trailer comes standard with a um, uh, spare tire uh, mounting place. I haven't got one of those yet. The uh, trailer is a 2018. It's brand new. It's uh, the uh, company that I bought it from is in Perth, Ontario, and uh, they were clearing them out because they're moving. So um, uh, this one's been sitting on the lot. And I got it for a super deal. A um, couple of things I want to do to it. Uh, number one, I want to clean the uh, deck boards here and put some water sealer on it. And the other thing we're going to do is going to put on some e-track. So we'll do the video here. Let's get the deck cleaned up and then uh, we'll get some water seal on it and once that's done then we'll put in the e-track so stay tuned all right so the instructions here say to uh, apply this and let it sit for 10 minutes you can dilute it one to one uh, with water or you can use it uh, straight on i'm going to use my pressure washer to uh, to apply it and i'm going to put it on the uh, uh, on the apl applicator motor the soap mode and uh, we'll just give it a shot here and see how it does it's going to take a few seconds to get the chemical in there it goes. All right. So we'll come up here. I'm wearing dirty clothes here today. Uh, my painting clothes so that I don't have to worry. Uh, I don't have to worry about uh, getting some stuff on here. It's marked that it is uh, uh, corrosive. So, uh, you know, watch your clothing, uh, protect your eyes and uh, don't let it splash up on you. It's not coming out here at a, at a very high uh, uh, pressure it's just coming on and, and letting it sit so the instructions say uh, to let this sit for 10 to 15 minutes and then either scrub it down with a stiff bristle brush or wash it down with your pressure washer at a medium pressure they say about 500 psi you don't want to be gouging the wood i guess you could put this on with a brush it's got a pretty uh, pungent odor so make sure you're not applying this inside the garage uh, if you are, make sure it's well ventilated. Uh, you don't want to be breathing this stuff in. All right, that's it. That's all there is to it. We'll let that sit for 10 minutes and we'll give it a quick brush and then we'll hose it off. 
Okay, in case I didn't mention it, this is Bear Premium uh, All-in-One Wood Cleaner, uh, so it's good for uh, uh, brightens and removes uh, mold and mildew and stains. So it's uh, the stuff that we're going to that we used here. So I'm just going to got some fresh water here. Run my hose through there, and uh, we're just going to blow all of that junk out of there, so that we don't corrode the pump and the pressure washer. And as soon as you see the water uh, being clear uh, without the soap bubbles in it, you know you've gotten it all. So there we go. All right, well, it's been 10 minutes. And uh, through the magic of the pause button, let's take a peek here at uh, how it looks. I've got my pressure washer at the higher power. Now that's about 500 PSI and I'm going to keep it uh, roughly about 8 inches away from the, the wood here so I'm not digging in. And oh my gosh, uh, what a difference this is making. So all that ugly grey is uh, disappearing. And we're just going to spray this off. This is uh, pretty amazing. Sure beats sanding. Look at that. We're ready to spray all this stuff off one more time. And it's making a difference, but not, not a huge difference. It was pretty clean from the first pass. We are getting the residue stains off of there. And so uh, it should look nice when we stain it. All right, well, I got the pressure washer put away and uh, we're gonna take a look at uh, the E-Track here. The E-Track is uh, kind of a neat system. It, uh, we're going to bolt that down and it's going to give us uh, multiple tie points uh, instead of just this one little tie down here. And that way as I move things around or if I'm carrying different things other than the ATVs, I'll be able to tie it down. And how, how this works is you've got different attachments. And this is just a simple loop attachment and you just pop that in and now you have a tie down. Or you can use this uh, flexible one and it's the same way. You just uh, pull back the clamp, pop it in and you got a tie down. We want to try and bolt through the structural members as much as possible. I'm going to use large fender washers and you got to remember this is all structural underneath here. So I'm going to bolt in four different spots across here. So my force is actually this way, it's going that way, so I'm bolted down solid here. I've got two solid points that I can tie down through to the frame uh, this way, which is not really an issue. And so uh, there's a bunch of places to tie them down. I'm going to use four uh, quarter inch bolts per side, so eight per track. I'm going to have one track here, uh, one track up in here and again this is all structural and I've got a couple of places to tie down on the inside here and then we're going to do the same thing on on the other side so um, that's the plan so there we go four corners uh, we'll be able to uh, cross tie the quad here cross tie it on the back uh, be able to uh, tie off the uh, back of the side by side of course at the back there and then pick off a spot here uh, to tie in the front uh, so we have a four point anchor on each now these are rated for uh, well they're rated for 6,000 pounds per rail I'm putting on quarter inch bolts that's not quite 6,000 pound rating my straps are only 2,000 pound rating so uh, my bolts are way way over that four or eight uh, quarter inch bolts will give me uh, roughly uh, about four, 4,500 pounds uh, tensile strength. Now I'm not trying to keep the machine down. I'm not trying to uh, keep it down while the trailer is upside down. All I'm trying to do is stop the machine from swaying. So there's plenty, plenty of uh, strength there. So remember the lateral forces are this way. And so that as long as we're tied into the structural member here at every spot, uh, then we're gonna have a lot of strength. So stay tuned. All right, so that all lines up really nice. I got a structural member here. I got a structural member here, so we'll be able to tie into that. Actually, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna leave a little bit of room at the end here, not a big deal. And so that my bolt is centered here and it's centered here. I've got a two inch angle iron here. It's a two inch by uh, three sixteenths, it looks like. Actually, no, it's a three by two. So that goes in underneath and I'm gonna feel around here 
and I can drill here. I don't want to drill into the HSS tube here that holds the lighting. That's LED lighting, by the way. Uh, so I'm going to drill here, here, and then here, 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 uh, sorry, here. And we'll put two at the end so that way we're into uh, the structural stuff all the way across. So let's get going here. And we're through the steel. All right, so what I'm going to do here is we're just going to pop in a bolt so that uh, nothing moves. And we've got our spot. Then I'm going to feel in back here. Now, if I drill here, I got to go through two thicknesses of steel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill here so that I only have to go through one thickness of steel. It's going to be plenty structurally strong. And... Uh, uh, we'll be all set to go here. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to drill in here. Uh, this is just wood. That's a heck of a lot easier. And we'll pop in a bolt into the wood. Now, for the wood sections, I've got some large fender washers, so we have a little bit of strength there. So we got that. We've got two of them now. It's not going to move. Let's go for... Let's move our camera here. Let's go for our next structural section here. And I'm just going to uh, stop here for a second, reach in underneath. Yeah, there's no wiring there. There's nothing there. We're good there. We'll pop in a bolt. I'm not putting in any nuts and washers because I'm going to lift all of this out and let it dry properly underneath and then we'll stain and then we'll put it back on. And then the last spot I'm going to go is here in the corner. Drilling through wood is so much easier. And so that's my eight bolts for this section of E-Track and that's gonna be very, very strong. Okay, to recap, I got a bolt front and back here. This one is structural, this one is wood. I got a bolt here and here, they are both structural. I have a bolt here and here, they're both structural. And I have bolt here, front and back. This one is structural, this one is only wood. So, we'll drill the other ones off. Uh, that one obviously is gonna be in the same pattern. And then we'll do the front. And I'm gonna use a black Sharpie here, and I'm gonna mark uh, uh, LR for left rear. And I'm gonna put an arrow this way, showing that that's the front. And I'm just going to mark uh, a little spot on these bolts. Just in case we get a little bit crazy with the filler, I'll be able to see uh, where my marks are and I'll be able to drop those back in. And All right, now that everything's marked, we'll lift our track up out of the way. Move that over. Grab a little broom here and uh, clean all this up. And already the holes are harder to see, so I'm glad I marked everything. And uh, so that'll be good. There we go. That's the first one. It's structural. There's nothing in underneath, so we're going to go parallel to it. things are drying up pretty good and uh, the last thing I want to do here is uh, pick up all the uh, sawdust I tried sweeping it but uh, it's stubborn so we'll uh, use the shop vac all right well the temperatures uh, it's a few hours later here and the temperatures really come down the humidity has gone so I figured uh, before it gets too late tonight we'll get a first coat down on here and uh, that way the morning dew won't settle into the deck tomorrow and I'll be able to get the second coat on. I'm using uh, Bare uh, Deck Plus. It's a semi-transparent, it's a waterproofing uh, wood stain and it says it's good for three years on deck so we'll see how we do. We did the prep work so I'm hoping that uh, you know if I get if I get a year I'll be happy and uh, it definitely will protect the uh, 
the deck over the winter. And that's going to take some abuse, you know, driving the ATV and the uh, uh, the side by side onto it. But uh, we'll do a little bit of protection here. I think it's going to give it a nice look. Um, I'm going to apply this fairly liberal and uh, try and be even though and try not to get it too much on the uh, on the black paint now this is uh, this trailer has um, it's a powder coat so uh, on powder coat it's like a plastic compound and uh, so if I do get some overspill onto it should be able to just bra just take it off with uh, a cloth or something uh, while it's still uh, while it's still wet so you got to remember I'm going to be driving uh, muddy machines over top of this shortly <laughs> so all I'm trying to do is uh, uh, get some protection over the wood hopefully uh, we'll see how it goes uh, that the uh, oh, just a natural rain and maybe a little bit of uh, uh, gentle washing will uh, get rid of most of the mud uh, and it won't build up too too much this can says it does uh, four, three to four hundred square feet depending on how you apply it so the uh, surface area here is uh, seven by fourteen feet so that's uh, ninety eight square feet so I got plenty in the can and I'll probably have uh, if I like the uh, final look I'll have enough to do the deck in the back. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get this uneven. I'm going to come back with the brush and just touch up those edges again. That'll only take a moment. I'm liking the color. Look forward to seeing it in the sunlight tomorrow. Well, there we go. Nice and quick and easy. We'll touch up a few of the spots around the edges with the brush. And we'll let this dry overnight and see how it looks in the morning. Okay, here we are, day two. It's um, morning and uh, looks like everything is uh, dried pretty nicely. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Uh, overall, it's uh, pretty good for a first coat that was done in the dark. There's a few spots uh, that are, uh, uh, well, a little bit uh, missed, uh, especially uh, between the cracks. You can see in here we kind of missed in between the cracks and, uh, well, that's to be expected, I guess. Uh, that's what happens when you do uh, a job uh, when the light's not good. And there's uh, uh, one other spot that's uh, a little bit uneven here uh, so we'll get a uh, second coat on there and uh, things will be pretty good I'm really happy with the uh, with the color I guess I did an okay job I'm sure I'm going to be going back over with the paintbrush uh, a couple of times uh, between the cracks here I'm, uh, every time I seem to find a little spot that's uh, especially between the cracks where uh, I missed but uh, it looks pretty good overall uh, it's a lot easier to see now than it was uh, last night when it got dark. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased. We'll let this dry for uh, another uh, um, 15, 20 minutes. I've got my E-Track here. I wrote down here right front and uh, I've got my hole markings here. So we know that's the right front. My first mark is here, so we'll line up that hole and everything will line up because I've marked all the holes uh, where their bolts are going to go. So it's a pretty easy install. All right, so where we're under the wood, we're going to put a lock or a fender, or two and a half inch bolt. That's going to go through here. And underneath, we'll put in a uh, fender washer. Uh, that'll go this way. And then a split lock washer. And then, of course, a, uh, a nut. So that'll be our, our hardware package where there's only wood, where there's structural steel. Instead of having a um, fender washer, I'm just going to use the smaller washer here and uh, that will hold it back in underneath and we'll torque that down. Okay, so let's pop in our first one here. And I'm just going to put this on hand tight underneath here. 
we'll get the camera in underneath here so you can see what's going on. I got the fender washer. I'll put the split washer in. Now this one here actually has uh, a little bit of bite because I'm uh, I'm just uh, squeezing into the uh, structural channel here. All right, our next one, which is, uh, well, let me see here, right here. We'll pop that in. And uh, the, uh, it's expanded a little bit from the uh, unit. So we're going to use a, a small flat washer and a split ring, which is this one here, and the nut. So we're just going to pop in that underneath here with the split ring. And get the nut on there. All right. And we're good. All right. That's always good to double check. So that's the first one. Three more to go. All right, so the last thing to do is uh, this little tie down here. And the reason I want to put this one in is that uh, this is to tie back uh, the side by side. And I'll tie it from the front, probably at the winch point, and tie it back. And that's going to stop it from sliding forward and possibly hitting the quad at the front. Because it's really tight when you put the two machines in. You've only got a couple of inches of slack. So I've already pre-measured uh, or pre-started to drill a hole here. I've checked underneath. There's nothing there. There is a uh, square tubing of steel here that contains the LED lights. So I want to make sure I'm clear of that. And I am. So we'll pop this hole through. Now I'll mention it, I'm not exactly centered. Uh, the center line is right here and I don't want to be drilling through two boards, so I want to stay on one board. So uh, everything says that I shouldn't be doing uh, off center, but hey heck, uh, <laughs> structural integrity. We'll pop that bolt in. We'll uh, make sure that this is square uh, right about there. Now this is not structural, okay? I'm only drilling through wood. It's not structural. It's all it's doing is uh, stopping the uh, side by side from going forward. So I'm not too worried uh, about that. If I find that there is some stress on it, uh, I will add. Uh, uh, whoops, <laughs> I will add a, a bigger plate. Now don't forget to uh, insert the uh, the D ring first and uh, put that in like so. Pop those in. These are five sixteenths bolts. It'll be plenty strong. And I got some big fender washers and we'll double them up with some small washers and some nuts and we'll do that from underneath. So that's it. Uh, all you need to do is tighten that up. Well, that's my modifications on the load trail trailer. Uh, the last thing I want to do here is touch up the bolts underneath with some black paint so that uh, they're not quite as visible and try and slow down the rust as well. We'll let everything uh, cure for a good 24 hours before I load up the ATVs. If I have any more modifications, we'll make a video. If you have any comments, don't forget to leave those down below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll catch you on the trails.